Nashua is a genus within the family Procyonidae, whose best known members are raccoons. The two species within the genus are generally referred to as coatis. Two additional species of coatis, commonly known as mountain coatis, are placed in the genus Nashua. Nashua differs from Nashua in being larger and having larger canine teeth, but preliminary genetic evidence suggests that Nashua should be merged into Nashua. Other genetic studies have shown that the closest relatives of the coatis are the Alingos, from which they diverged about 10.2 million years ago. Like other Procyonids, coatis are omnivores. Their diet consists largely of insects, spiders, and other invertebrates as well as the occasional small vertebrate discovered while energetically foraging with their sensitive noses to the ground in forest leaf litter on Barro, Colorado Island, Panama, where they have been studied in greatest detail. They supplement this diet with copious amounts of fruit, as it becomes available seasonally from favored trees, such as figs and hog plums. Their very active foraging behavior appears to be interrelated with their distinctive social organization. Exceptional among procyonids, coatis are diurnal and for much of the year gregarious, though females nest and bear and nurse their young in isolation. Shortly after the altricial young become mobile the females aggregate into social groups known as bands. Bands consist of adult females and sub-adults and juveniles of both sexes. At maturity, at two years of age, males are excluded from bands and take up a solitary lifestyle. They are aggressively repelled from bands except during the mating season, when typically one male ingratiates himself to a band through submissive behavior, forages with it for a period of a few weeks, and mates with all of the adult females. During the nesting season, the sub-adults and juveniles remain together in bands while breeding adult females become solitary. For parturition and nesting, females begin breeding in their third or fourth year, apparently depending on nutritional status. Occasionally, older females become post-reproductive and these remain with the bands while breeding females separate. Breeding is synchronous as is parturition and nursing. Resumption of gregarious behavior takes place synchronously, as well, over the course of several weeks, depending on the existence of previous social relationships, i.e. females with prior relationships re-aggregate into bands more quickly than those forming new relationships. Nonetheless, persistent social bonds may form anew at this point in the reproductive cycle, while there may be a tendency to re-aggregate with kin. Prior relationships are not indispensable. Previously unfamiliar individuals may aggregate into bands with stable social relationships. A conspicuous means of bond formation is mutual grooming, on which an hour or more may be spent daily. Some of this appears to be ritualized as a form of social bond formation, though it is clearly mutually beneficial. As well, the burden of ticks on band members is lower than it is on solitary adult males, for instance. Thank you for watching. For more educational videos, please subscribe to WizScience on YouTube or visit wizscience.com.